Welcome to Huge Fans. I'm Catherine. I'm Liz, and we are joined by a little sister, a special guest. Virginia is here. Hi. So we are doing Shonda Rhimes because she's freaking amazing. And we are huge fans. And uh, Ginny, uh, the t-shirt you're wearing. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jin <laughs> shirt. Okay. It says, intern, Grey's Anatomy, Gray Sloan Memorial Hospital. Tell us about the shirt. Well, I went to Seattle and I was like, <laughs> I have to get something Grey's Anatomy. But um, yeah, I've never missed a Grey's Anatomy episode. So, so wait a minute. Was there a gift shop with Grey's Anatomy paraphernalia? All, all, like, and... Most of the gift shops had something. And then there was like, I think there was a Grey's Anatomy tour or something. Oh, they're very uh, smart. I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have time to do that. But Seattle capitalizing on the Grey's Anatomy franchise. It should. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. So look, most people know that Shonda Rhimes is... A mega showrunner. Yeah, or you should know. Right. So obviously Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and How to Get Away with Murder. And the most recent, Bridgerton, and even more recent, Inventing Anna. Oh, those are on Netflix. And, and Judy, you also watched uh, Private Practice, which is a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy, right? I did. I liked that. And I just looked it up. It is. It does have all six seasons on Hulu. Six seasons. Wow. Yeah, good for her. Good for her. So, Amazing. I mean, what I found so interesting was... She is a first one and only. A oh, one of one, they say. One of one. Yeah. She's the first of her kind to really do what she did. And I find that so amazing. So uh, aside from being a fan of multiple of her shows, I am a fan of her personally and just what she's been able to accomplish. And she amazes me. Yeah, because she's one of those, you know, in Hollywood, we talk about like, you know, uh, hyphen, hyphen, like so your actor, writer, director. She's a creator director she's directed i think very yeah. early on right she directed she directed two... one thing and that's really right, well that's still a director's credit that's still a director's credit a All writer right. and producer so mostly it's the why hasn't she acted <laughs> she has she actually did a, a what little, she l did a little guest star on mindy kaling show oh my. of oh there's oh. a connection there there's a definite about. connection okay, okay, there. Okay. okay so what i want to do is start with sort of more like her bio and then we can talk about shows sort of as we go along. Yeah, but I want to make sure we get in a lot of this information about like how she sort of came up and got going. So I kind of did a breakdown of a timeline. Oh, great. So cool. <laughs> starting with, she was born in Chicago. She's, I love this. She's the youngest of six kids. So a nice big family, like something we can relate mm. to. And uh, her parents are academics in like the university level. Well, I could relate to her on, there was something that I read um, an article or my on her Wikipedia, but it was that her mom was going back to get a degree Yeah, when all of the kids were like young and in school. I mean, that's something we all went through. You know, our younger siblings only kind of know our mom as a working mom. My m earlier memories of mom, she did not work, you know, but it wasn't like, she was just so busy. I never felt like mom wasn't like doing things. Of course. But to, but go, to go back, back to school is a whole different. so impressive. And so her mom, that, that is something I relate to her. Oh, a big family. And the mom goes back and gets a degree, you know, when they're all not grown up yet. So it's like kind of the whole family had to make that sacrifice or that choice. Yeah. So she, t I listened to her book because I'm dyslexic and audiobooks are just the greatest. And she read it, which was also fantastic. Which book? Which one? She wrote a book. It's called The Year of Yes, which yes, we'll get to, we'll yes. get to okay, okay. how she Ooh, I like ended. that. It was so great. I'm an even bigger fan of hers after mm -hmm, listening to this mm -hmm. book, just knowing what she went through and how hard she works and like her own standards for herself. It's crazy amazing. I'm trying to remember if I think she talked about it in her book that watching her mom go back to school and get her graduate degree. Yeah, actually, I think her mom attended college while raising the six kids and earned a PhD. So she is a doctor in yeah. educational administration. Okay, thank you for correcting me. Yeah. So she talked about looking at her mom and seeing a hardworking, very smart woman. Now, Shonda, for sure, always super smart. And she <laughs> describes herself as really, really shy, like an extreme introvert. Oh. And she said when she was a kid, she would lock herself in the pantry and play with the little jars and cans and like make up huge worlds. And like that was the beginning <laughs> of her imagination, like when she was a kid. And her mom would like knock on the door and like be like, uh, I need a can of peas. And she'd hand out a can of peas. She's like, oh, like you broke up. one of my characters. Yeah, you took one of my characters. I mean, hello. Now I only have peaches and, uh, you know, uh, corn. Corn to work with yeah, here. Yeah, what? <laughs> Oh, anyway. Okay. So she ends up 
going to Dartmouth, which is very impressive. Yes. And this is going to be a connection later to Mindy Kaling. Um, and to our own brother. I actually was kind of curious the year she was at Dartmouth if our brother James, who attended Dartmouth as well, ever crossed her path. She graduated in 91. So he was already gone. Yeah, yeah, he was already out. Okay, so that's 1991. She gets her bachelor's degree from Dartmouth College. Mm-hmm. She majored in English and in film studies. Oh, wow. Now, then she goes and she does a couple of different jobs. She's trying to write, but she initially wanted to be a novelist and was like a big fan of Toni Morrison. And that was sort of the direction that she wanted to go. And then kind of... Gave up on that idea and ended up going to USC film school and got her master's and did the writing fellowship there. Very impressive. I mean, just. Now, I was curious because her dad at one point was also at the University of Southern California. It was after. Oh, it was after. Yeah. So he. Isn't that kind of a bummer? Because I thought, oh, another parallel. Remember Virginia when um, Catherine had to be at high school with our father. Yeah. No, yeah. They, you should not have a similar overlap. <laughs> no, no, no. It, she wasn't traumatized. From, I could I could be wrong, but from what I could like parse out from the timeline, it looked like he ended up there after. Okay, got it. Oh, well, she didn't have your embarrassing experience to no, share. Well, no. Okay, so she finishes film school, and during film school, she ends up working with Deborah Martin Chase, which Mm. is a big producer, does an internship, and then Chase becomes a mentor to her. And for those of you who don't know, like University of Southern California, USC's film school is... Extremely prestigious and hard to get into. Hard to get into, world-renowned. It's also, you know, if you do well there... You know, you have opportunities that you probably wouldn't have any other way. Because also, you're right in LA. You're right in the thick of it, you know. So it's pretty amazing that she was graduating with a master's. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. So she works on a documentary, a Hank Aaron documentary. And then she does a short film. I think this is technically her only directing credit. (laughs) Blossom and Vale with Jada Pinkett Smith and Jeffrey Wright, who... Yeah, I mean... That's quite a cast for a short and your only directorial debut. Let me get those two now A-listers in my short. Like, that's one of those things, like, how did that even happen? I mean, I kind of know a little about her book, uh, The Year of Yes. But I also lean to, like, you just need to ask. The worst they can say is no. So why not just ask? Yeah. So who knows? Maybe she just asked them and she actually got lucky. Pulled in favors. Maybe. Maybe. So she goes from that to she ended up writing the Dorothy Dandridge movie for HBO. Oh, that's the Halle Berry. That's the Halle Berry one. And Halle Berry got a lot of awards and accolades for it. Rightfully so. I remember that. That was and then, incredible. So that I, that was 1999. Then in 2001, she writes the Britney Spears Crossroads movie, which is hysterical that that was like what you know, she she ended up I, I watched a bunch of interviews preparing for this and she does say she's like I did a lot of different things I just you know I was interested in things and it was fun but I was writing movies and you know then the next thing she but does you know what, though, that's interesting because Britney Spears obviously a huge global star she starred in it I do remember that oh yeah mm-hmm. now I like Britney Spears I remember I think I actually did see it it was not a great movie, but if you were a fan, like you did not care. It was almost like Teflon proof. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't I think it was critically not well received particularly, but made a lot of money. And, yeah, I don't know, think so it matters. Yeah. And it was a Britney Spears vehicle, you know. Of I course. mean, you know, she was acting in it, I think sang in it. <laughs> God love Shonda Rhimes. And that kind of speaks to Britney that like, okay, you're gonna write what's kind of like a and story inspired by my life. Yeah. So then in 2004, she writes The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement, which is a very cute movie. (gasps) Ginny, I think those would be perfect for your girls. Yeah. Because Princess Bride, the first one is so adorable. Not Princess Bride. That's a very funny (laughs) slip of the tongue. (laughs) Princess Diaries with Anne Hathaway. Inconceivable. It was actually Princess Diaries, right? I will add that to our queue because it's so hard to find something that we can all agree on. <laughs> yeah, you've got some strong opinions over there. Yes. Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. That was hers. And then she tells this story that she was, she had adopted her first daughter. She has three daughters, by the way, and is a big proponent of the working mom. Mm-hmm. You know, it's good for your kids to see you working. And if that is what makes you happy and, you know, for her, she's very vocal that writing is her passion. You know, it's in her blood and she couldn't not do it. So it's important for her girls to see her, you know, succeed at that and work at that. And and then but she does also say, like, you know, 
very likely if I'm succeeding at writing, somehow I'm failing at being a mother. I'm missing something. Uh, I'm the balance. Yeah. And she's really clear about how hard that can be. That's interesting because that plays into a lot of her characters. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So at this she's point, she's just writing on. films because that's not so what this, we know her for. Correct. That's what I thought was so interesting. So then she said, I was at home with a baby and I was watching a lot of TV mm. and I realized the kind of character life, you know, the big character arcs that I want to write, that's what you do on TV. Episodic probably. Uh, yeah. Right? yeah. So she she did a big pivot and she went to her agent and she said, I think I want to get into TV. And, you know, she had some good credits. So very quickly, she had a development deal and some producing partners. And the first thing she sold to ABC, she did a show about female war correspondents. And that was in 2003. And ABC didn't pick it up. But she realized, like, oh, OK, well, what does ABC want? And she was asking around, you know, because she's very smart. She'll, like, ask mm -hmm. people and, like, you know, figure out what's going on. And she said somebody told her that Bob Iger, who was the head of ABC at the time, wants he a just retired from Disney. I'm so sad. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. so Bob Iger wants a medical show. She, oh. In this interview, she's very funny. She's like, well, I'm not stupid. I'm going to write a medical show. And I will am hand I gonna... this to him on a silver yeah. platter. And okay. what am I going to write about? Women, of course. So, and she was very interested in surgery. So that is literally how Grey's Anatomy came to her. She was like, oh, I, I can write a medical show. I, I'm very interested in that. And who would it be about? Of course, women. So there you go. So that was in 2005 is the start of Grey's Anatomy, which, of course, is still 2005. Running. Wow. Still running to this day. Crazy. And Ginny, you have watched every episode. Oh, for sure. And I didn't realize because I looked it up. There's 17 seasons. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, it's, it's that's crazy. A, that's, a, that's a lot. I don't even know what other shows have 17 seasons. I'm sure there are other shows, but... This is up there as I mean, one of I the think, longest uh, running shows. Is it um, Law & Order Special Victims Unit is doing like yes. a crazy like 21 also, or something. Also, hello, network executives. Also, the, the main character is a woman. Come on. Hello. I mean, I think I've seen every episode of Grey's Anatomy, but I don't know if I've seen them all in order. The last five or six years... Did either being on a treadmill or Hulu <laughs> or and now Netflix. Like now I've seen every episode. But the earlier days, I think I was a little more sporadic and all over the map. But I would try to catch them all. That's interesting. I'm kind of the reverse. I was super diligent in the beginning. Watched it very faithfully in the beginning and then became more sporadic. Well, I only got Netflix during lockdown when there was like no new TV during the early pandemic. So, yeah, I relied on just basic satellite cable so i would dvr my like few shows like gray's anatomy so yeah that's what i had now of course with netflix it's endless choices of things so i could see how you skipped around but wait but, a minute so did you start watching in 2005 gray's anatomy i'm sure yeah so let's see probably in grad school at the time i, I mean what like. a revelation that pilot was though too i think it's funny because she talks about it that when she did the pilot for gray's anatomy ABC was super nervous. They were like, I don't know if people are going to want to watch these women. They're not very likable. I mean, who sleeps with someone the day before they start their new job? And, you know, like, and Sandra O's character, they were like, hmm. Little she's, abrasive. She, and she doesn't, you know, she at that point hadn't divulged completely that she was not interested in getting married and having kids. She was 100 percent a career focused. That was what she wanted to focus on. She was great. Yeah. Well, I have a good quote that um, in some of my readings I found that actually hits that right on the head from Shonda. I love the exploration of what happens when you go from the belief in the magical romantic fiction to the realities of what actually relationship can be and cannot be. Most women have been conditioned from birth to believe the romance and being loved is the most powerful, amazing, special thing that can ever happen to them. I've been writing a deconstruction of that my entire career. Wow, that makes sense, too. And I think I mean, it's like putting the women in the lead, too, of where Sandra O oh and Ellen Pompeo, they were the relationship. They were the main relationship oh, really at first. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was interesting because normally it's about... And I think their run was about 10 years or 10 seasons and yeah. before Sandra left the show. Yeah, but she didn't get killed off like a lot of characters. No, no, no. no. They gave her a big send off. Definitely Shonda has talked about how that is her character. Like that is... Oh. Meaning like... 
that's her champion. She's like, you know, Christina Yang. That's who she kind of channeled all of her gladiatorness into initially and just like all of that. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I could see that. A lot of the things I wish I could say and things I wish I could do. That's the vibe I got. Now, Ginny, anyway. were you all into the McDreamy and all that? I was. I mean, I know you guys are talking about the strong female characters. And by the way, um, do you remember Meredith and uh, Christina doing their dance it out? I still use that phrase with my girls sometimes. Like, let's just <gasps> dance it out. Let's just dance oh, it out. You so do? Great. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love because that. Because problem can't be solved. Just They don't always go for it. But it's do like, you come add on, tequila? Whatever. Just kidding. <laughs> There's some great... music and dance. You'll feel much better. Yeah, they're um, great. They're great ending scene is them dancing it out. Right. Yeah. Like the end I, of I, I when do like there, there has been so many goodbyes in this show. Oh. I didn't like all of them, I'll be honest with you. But I do like Christina's. It made sense to me that she went on to like a strong, powerful position. I like that they kind of chimed her in occasionally. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, there's always they started with McDreamy and then McSteamy. Of course. And there's always some good eye candy. Ugh. Um I know Liz, we both like uh DeLuca. I mean, Italiano. I mean, just uh, lemon cello yeah. delightfulness. I mean, like <laughs> I, I mean that elevator scene where he's like telling her how he's hot for her and he's speaking Italian, and you're like, oh, she doesn't understand him, and then Meredith responded in Italian, and it was like, oh, Ooh, it's on, <laughs> and I was like, because snap to you, you know that she, um, in 2020, Ellen Pompeo became also an EP on it, I yeah. think, mm-hmm. which I thought spoke very or show the dynamic and the relationship she has with Shonda, which I thought was incredible. Like, yes, she deserved it. Like, it's Meredith Grey. I mean, yeah, she's the spine of the show for sure. And she has stuck it out. Yeah. I mean, and I agree back with what you were saying, Virginia. I mean, she didn't always write episodes that as a fan you were going to love. She challenged you sometimes, both the characters, their journey, how she brought them in or took them out. Yeah. The, it was 17 years of character development. Yeah. Well, and I think she, you know, it's interesting that you think of these shows as like romance shows, but they're not really. That's too simple. And she's definitely, I mean, that goes back to me talking about episodic and how she wanted to write because the character development. I'm sure, Virginia, you could relate to this. There were some deaths that were like truly shocking. Like George. Oh, I mean, there were ones you were horrible. just so like, what? They've had so many epic disasters. It's impressive what they do production wise. Like the plane crash and like a car going in a building. And I mean, they did the whole shooting thing. So yeah, they. But then she'll introduce new characters and you grow to like them. Yeah. I mean, it's a long I think road. we are tapped out on how many sisters she can have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely bobbed and weaved and sister-in-law, found sister, all these type of things. But Well, and just I have to go back to the hottie thing really quick, oh, the yeah. McSteamies. I'm kind of surprised that I totally dig Owen, like the redhead. But he's so like military manly like when he starts making out with the girl because he's gone through different characters i think he was with well, amelia now he's with teddy i mean he just like hunkers down on that person it's like yes <laughs> well that was Into the him. big um ptsd was part of his big storyline because yeah. he with sandra right, he was Yo, first with christina that's right that was first with christina and there was a very challenged relationship because of that and i think even brought in some controversy and that show has dealt with a lot of controversy with oh, some yeah. of the characters and all the elements but that show also was one of the first ones in television I felt like just took on without, like, you could just tell as a writer, she didn't give a damn. She was going to put the stories of diversity. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, racial tension. She was going to take on political topics of the time, LGBTQ, anything. She was going to take it straight on and filter it through the lens of the episodic medical structure. Yeah. And it worked because either it was the main character staff or some person coming in with an emergency that was going to have to be handled. And you're like, Oh God, okay, what's happening here? I mean, every week, sometimes I think I know what's about to happen. And then there's a twist, but that for me was the first time a showrunner. Cause at the end it's called a title card for those of you who don't know where you see like a name of a production coming comes right. up at the end and Sean Deland and the roller coaster came up. And after watching for a few years, I was like, who is that? And that became my awareness of who she was. And immediately I was like, whoa, uh, okay, let me know more about you. And so you guys know me, you know, I'm a big Bachelor fan. So I love the romance and all that. But I do love the medical aspect. And I've tried other medical shows, but 
I haven't jived with any of them, but I, I do like all the different medical stories each time. Well, I felt like I've had like seven or eight of the things they've diagnosed. So it has <laughs> well, been helpful. Well, it, it is a little dangerous <laughs> if you're a bit of a hypochondriac. You're going to be like, uh-oh, I recognize something. <laughs> <laughs> no, with the romance throughout, I mean, obviously the, you know, they've really taken us on a journey with the... Uh, McDreamy, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. And they had a nice last season was sort of, I think, a nice sort of bow on that. Oh, yeah. We don't to... get spoiler alerts because, mm -hmm. as Virginia said, 17 seasons are available on Netflix. So... People might be catching up. And this or... is yeah. classic mm -hmm. network. So you're talking like 24, 24 plus possibly some seasons. Yeah. Typically a season is 24. So And she does think outside the box. Jen, um, I will. This is the one that's, you know, people still um, have issues with. The musical one. <laughs> The musical what of musical one. Exactly. You that. blocked it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. That wouldn't be one of my favorites. <laughs> I almost feel like that is like a badge of, I don't know. I was going to say honor, but I don't know. When a show does a musical they episode, just, you're they like, have to they, go, they have to go for it at some point. No. I, yeah. I might have skipped that one. I do remember that Chicago Hope did a musical episode. Uh, or was uh, that Scrubs? Now I'm getting confused. Scrubs did one. Yeah. And I, Chicago might have done one. But yes, it's, it is a benchmark for most if you've been around for 17 seasons you're like well let's just try music you almost episode. have to try it yes yeah. <laughs> so props i like that, that um this the little backdrop that she's been in that same house the whole time and it's so oh, many people yeah. come and go from that house and now it's like mom central it's like a disaster over there oh my gosh that's the other thing they don't do perfect on her shows which i appreciate because oh yeah mm -hmm. it's very flawed characters um well, very real and their household and their worlds are messy which and is that's much relatable. more realistic. Yeah. yeah, I think that's purposefully realistic and relatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, I, I mean, Grey's Anatomy is going to be through line because it's still going. So during Grey's Anatomy, we talked about a little bit, she launches Private Practice, which mm -hmm. did do, I think, I want to say five seasons, hundred and something episodes. Yeah, there's six on Hulu. Oh, six. Okay. Pretty successful. And that was, a you know, she's one of those ones sort of like, I don't say crossover, but Dr. Addison Montgomery, who was originally with McDreamy, so played by Kate Walsh. That's was the, she the ex-wife? She was the ex-wife. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. And she, I think she was just on an episode of Grey's Anatomy, like, recently. She was. She I watched back. it, yep. Yeah. And that's the other thing I'll give to Shonda. She is almost like a repertoire theater because she uses the same people in different ways. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And brings them back. Well, yeah, I mean, even which if, gives like, such a feeling of warm fuzziness and familiarity for us, the viewers. For sure. Yeah. Even just revisiting, you know, she will use actors in different shows, which will come up later, mm -hmm. but also keeping characters alive and bringing them back for a little reminder. Because that's kind of how life works. You know, people don't disappear forever. I mean, know, God they, bless her, sort of pun intended. Um, this last season, to about bringing back, it's like, People were brought back, not really from the dead, but we got to see the other yeah, side I'm... and really tie some bows on some relationships. So, you know, people really like that, which was smart, too. Yeah. And it was interesting. That could be very dangerous. You're going to go into like, what is afterlife or what is heaven? And I think they actually did a good job. Yeah, they did a good job. Yeah. Um, OK, so that was in 2007. So really, Grey's Anatomy had been on for two-ish years. Mm -hmm. And she said in an interview, she was like, really? I just was concerned that Grey's Anatomy could go away at any time. So I wanted to like a backup plan. So I was like, well, and private practice was good because it wasn't just like surgery. You know, um, they had whatever it was, six doctors that all did different things. So there was two different therapists there, a woman named Violet. Yep. And I forget the other guy. I loved Violet. But yeah, so they could bring in different elements. It was a different way. type of medical show, which was a good yeah. pivot. Wasn't someone a gynecologist? There was a woman who was like, I think she was a sex therapist. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember it but was... by the way, not to get too sidetracked, but um, there was a doctor named Cooper. And um, I guess that his his actual name is Paul Adelstein. But he was just on, I just finally watched Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. Oh. And I was like, oh, he's from private practice and I haven't seen him in so long. <laughs> oh, I know you're talking about. Yes. And I actually watched both shows and he was great in both you're right i totally remember i mean that. to okay. me he's not like mcsteamy but he still pulls it off he he's, has a he's swagger he's good he's good he's, he's got, got a range. confident swagger about him yes you're right he grows on you he grows on you very true okay so now we're at about 2011 mm -hmm. and she has the short lived off the map so we're gonna skip over that because it doesn't really hit but then that was the same year she got the pilot script order 
for Scandal. So oh. Scandal was the next year, mm-hmm. 2012. So she had three shows going, which is, wow. It's crazy. I'll, I'll do this a little bit later because she ends up doing, in the year of Yes, which ends up being 2014, she does a TED Talk after that. And she talks about having three shows on the air, sometimes four. It's crazy. Producing all of them, Mm -hmm. writing on all of them. Wow. Okay. So then we get Scandal and I was a big Scandal fan. I mean, I- Did you watch Scandal, Virginia? I did not. And you know what? Okay, girl. Oh, it's very enjoyable. I'll go back and watch it. And yes. When did um, How to Get Away with Murder come then? Okay. So then- After that, but I'll just say, Scandal is so well written because political shows can- polarize people because they feel like you're you've got an agenda right west wing's kind of been accused of that even though it was so beautifully written and of course they kind of it has i a always point think of view. they take us they try to write a central line so they're not isolating people into different corners but scandal because it was really through carrie washington's character olivia pope who is a crisis management expert she which is a fixer basically because yeah. i've dealt with a lot of publicists and pr people in my life i thought that's what she was I'm like no crisis management expert in the political arena and you know her hat her handbags her jackets her whole look her oh, confidence the styling was amazing i mean wow what a strong character out of the gate leaned into that she was a woman of color but by no means did that define her character in the sense that she was a strong confident woman and then to be having the affair that was totally very sexy with the president of the United States. I mean, scandalous. Which Hence the name. Tony Goldwyn, Goldwyn played. Mm-hmm. Their chemistry was so good. Yeah, I think uh, what was interesting about Scandal was it was the first network show to star a woman of color in 40 years or something like that. Oh, it was, what? It was crazy. I mean, she's talked about it. And ABC, I think probably... Only because she had as much clout as she did because Grey's Anatomy was doing so well. And And once again, diversity, LGBTQ, political, Ginny, scandal. There are murders. There is affairs. There is treachery, debauchery. Like I... Debauchery, you mean? (laughs) Well, again, I can think, you know, lockdown and initial COVID. I did not have a TV in my room until then. So there were shows like that that I just didn't feel comfortable watching out in the living room and have my toddler oh, like yeah. come out. This is no, not, yeah. uh, yes, it is adult I mean, it viewing. Is, right. It is ABC, so you're not going to get nudity yeah. and swearing, but. But now maybe I could do it in my room. Oh, you absolutely right, Scandal could. loved it. <laughs> Scandal. And Carrie Washington was very well, well received in that role. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, think they, she might have even won some awards for it, but I mean, the casting across all of her properties right. and shows is just very, very good. supposedly it was based on someone um, in the Bush administration. Yeah, I guess her name is Judy Smith. I happen to have ah. it in front of I didn't know who that was, but it came up in the research That's that it was someone wow. in the okay. Bush administration. Now, look. I mean, Olivia Pope's character is covering up murders and all sorts of stuff. So I don't know. Not covering How inspired, up. inspired, yeah. I mean, they go. Oh, little, no, she does. I mean, like, it, it goes uh, it goes uh, off the rails, It maybe? goes a little off the rails, but almost, you know. In, in a, the best way possible. She definitely does what we consider adult soap operas in the evening. I mean, there For is sure. kind of everything. And, this and was, high stakes in terms of, like, the stories are always really right. big. And This was very high stakes. I mean, global espionage occasionally. I oh, mean, there was just God. a lot going on. So Lots of secrets. And oh, it's a, it was it, – I was a big, big fan. I was in and – Oh, the supporting cast was so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I rode the ride. Well, Jen, you got to watch it. Okay, so – I will check it out. Okay, so that started in 2012, and then 2013, she gets the pilot order for How to Get Away with Murder, and then that goes on the air in 2014. So in 2014, she for sure has three shows, and she is the queen of Thursday night. If you remember, TGIT. On ABC. Right. Take off. Thank God it's Friday. It's Thank God it's Thursday. TGIT. Anyway. On ABC. Well, you know, How to Get Away with Murder, first of all, the title alone, I, I remember when I first and Viola started, Davis. Oh, my God. Well, you were dealing, with, incredible. A, you were dealing with a movie star coming. This was, so, I actually think, if you think 2013, I mean, what people don't realize now it's opened up completely, but movie stars typically did not do television. It was not all that common. 
streaming's changed the game completely on that. For sure. But to have someone of Viola Davis's caliber at the time, she was definitely considered one of the top actresses in the movie arena, to then go, I'm going to do an ABC weekly show. And I almost thought it was a jo- I almost thought it was Saturday Night Sc- Live sketch at first, like, how to get away with mud. <laughs> it was like, what? And her whole black chalkboard when she wrote, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it was, and you go, but once again, love a good handbag, the whole strong, confident woman. I'm like, what? I was all into, and I think was that one written in a way that it kind of began with showing you. Yeah, it was set up mm. in a way where you didn't always know what was going on timeline wise. You'd right. see something the and was... then you'd go back and be like, well, how did we get there? Wait, who's dead? Oh, wait, how did they, who, what? It was constructed in a very interesting way to keep you kind of on the edge of your seat and guessing. Okay, so here's where I want to bring up. This is where she starts her year of yes, right? Oh, so this is okay. 2014. She's got three shows on the air. Two to three daughters already at this point. Uh, I th- uh, did she already? I can't remember exactly when she... There's a little bit of a gap between her first daughter and then her Oh, by her 2013, two... she had all three children. Okay. So, all three daughters. Right. So there was a little gap. So she's got two little ones Jeez, then wow. at this point. Okay, so what I didn't know about her that is so crazy is this self-described shy introvert person. Mm -hmm. She also did no publicity. She did not do interviews. She hated going on red carpets. She described it as... The publicity side of it. Yes, like an anxiety thing. She wanted to sit in her room and write and talk to writers and talk about the show. She had a publicist, mainly to make sure she didn't have to do any public appearances. Like, that was his job, to say no. (laughs) To turn down invitations. So the beginning, like, this book, she basically says she was talking to her sister. She was, like, naming off all these things she'd been invited to and all these things that people wanted her to do, blah, blah, blah. And her sister's like, well, you're not going to do any of those. You always say no. You you know, you never Mm. say yes. And she just, like, took it to heart and went, like, yeah, actually, maybe I maybe I should change that. So she started her year of yes, and she started to do all the things she was uncomfortable doing. And to realize that she was so uncomfortable, I hadn't tracked that she hadn't been doing publicity. I became aware of her. Oh, Shonda Rhimes. Of course, there's Shonda Rhimes. There's Shonda Rhimes talking or being interviewed. Yeah, it didn't really happen until 2014, mm. which is crazy because at that point, Grey's Anatomy was in its 10th season. Okay. So, wow, here's she actually says that at that point she had been interviewed by Oprah, who I mean, we'd said Shonda grew up in in Chicago. Oprah was like a god to her practically. Well, her studios were based in Chicago. Yeah. So she was interviewed by Oprah three times and remembers absolutely none of it, like completely blocked it out. Like it's just fuzz. She doesn't have any clear memory of it. Like what? (laughs) What? So in 2014, she decides she's going to do this. Year of Yes, and somehow her publicist must have heard about it because he called her up and he said, okay, well, for the finale of Scandal, we're going to do Jimmy Kimmel Live. And she's like, uh, no, I am not doing that. So much of her cast had gone on Jimmy Kimmel. And she was like, yeah, great. Have Kerry Washington. Have Bellamy. I'm not doing it. And they were like, um... I heard you were doing this year of yes. So maybe, (laughs) oh no. (laughs) So she agrees, but she said- Maybe she just wanted to write the book. She was motivated to write the book, so she had to do it. Well, I- She could write the book. I mean, it's a fantastic book. I super highly recommend it. It'll really also make you think about all the things that you should be doing in your Mm -hmm. life and like pivots that you should make and, you know, how to be more sort of authentic about who you are and what you're doing with your life. It's, it's- a great book. Anyway, so she's doing this year of yes. Oh, I forgot. So the very first thing that happens, I forgot to, I got to go back a little bit. The very first thing that happens is Dartmouth calls and asks uh-huh. her to give the commencement speech. Where she went to college. Okay. Right. So now this is like a couple months off. So she forces herself to say yes and then promptly stops thinking about it. And literally Ugh. didn't think about it for five and a half months until like two weeks before the commencement. It was like, oh my God. Oh, I have to go and do that. But she said, even though it was the first thing she said yes to, it was not the first thing she had to do. This Jimmy Kimmel Live was the first thing that she had to do. So she was That would make her feel uncomfortable. And in the past, she definitely would have said no to. Oh, she had actively made sure she was not doing any of this. Mm -hmm. So 
her publicist manages to negotiate that they do a special and not do it live because she's like, oh, no, I I can't do it live. I mean, (laughs) who knows what's going to happen? This could be a disaster. So she does do it. But that's 2014. And realizing that starting in 2014, that's when you start to see her. You see her on red carpets. You see her doing interviews. She did a TED Talk the next year. That's where I became aware of the year of yes. Yeah. And I think she did some publicity for the book. So then some of those interviews are in there. And I think the TED Talk is 2016. And it was sort of tied into the book as well. I took it too literally when I... (laughs) I saw some excerpts from the year of yes. I was like, whoops, wait a minute. I probably said some things yes to because I was inspired by that. And I probably said a few yeses that I should have said no to. So I need you, to. Go. You already say a lot of yeses, I think. I know. Well, and it's also <laughs> supposed to be yes to things that you normally wouldn't do because you're hiding. That's a, kind that's a of. limited list with me. Yeah, that's not really your problem. <laughs> so also during this year of yes, Shonda did her pretty much one and only acting credit. So we talked about it a teeny bit before. She is friends with Mindy Kaling. They both went to Dartmouth, so they bonded over that. And Shonda was a fan of Mindy's show. So when Mindy called and asked if she would guest star playing a version of herself, she said yes. So again, that just was another thing that she did in the year of yes, 2014. So in her TED Talk in 2016, she basically says, and she has such a great, I mean, she's a writer, but she also can really speak. So she wrote herself a really good speech and then just perform the crap out of it like she has great rhythm she's amazing well one of the things as a writer in um reading about her was that she will typically perform out the scenes for the show she's writing on that does not surprise so me. she'll play all the characters and she'll do the highs the lows the crying the screaming the yelling so i mean she loves really? a long uh, like a big monologue Exhausting. rant yeah so by hearing it typically a writer can write something but then by hearing it gives you the cadence or yeah. the rhythm of it. She's or the got very good rhythm. So by her saying it out loud and her being able to hear it, she's able to know if it rings true to her. So that's fascinating. That you, you know, there was a TED talk. It's like, oh yeah, she's a performer. Yeah, well, oh, she, all these characters are spinoffs of some version of herself probably. Yeah. Okay, so here in this TED talk is when she does this whole thing about she was responsible for 70 hours of TV that season. Four shows... Three shows in production, sometimes four. An episode of television, typically a budget is between three and six million dollars. So let's average it at five. So she was responsible for three hundred and fifty million dollars worth of television that year. She was airing in two hundred and fifty six territories in sixty seven languages. But but when she does this little rant, I mean, go to YouTube and just do, you know, Shonda Rhimes TED Talk, even just. Shonda Rhimes TED Talk, you'll find it immediately. And that bit is so well done and paced so perfectly. And she does this thing where she also like, she'll repeat a phrase, she'll repeat a phrase, she'll repeat a phrase and like build and scaffold and repeat a phrase. It's beautiful. It's really cool. Well, that's what TED Talk is supposed to do. You're supposed to leave inspired and in your own life, be able to adapt what someone else's experiences were into your own. Yeah. So in 2016, that fourth show was The Catch, which only did two seasons. Um, I mean, some showrunners and producers. I, that's like all they ever thrilled. do. I mean, <laughs> like one show with two seasons. Some people, that's like their that's, whole career. Yeah, that's like, you know. So currently, she also has Station 19 on the air. And now, Ginny, Station 19. Yes, you watch that, don't you? Okay. Yes. There's a couple things I like about it. I didn't get going on it at first. Me and my my girlfriend Mary Saul. We were both resistant, and they were like, oh, we have to watch it. Because they did because, crossovers. Yeah, because you're like, okay, the guy got attacked by a bear, but you, you could have found <laughs> out how he got attacked by a bear in the previous, in the Station 19. Genius programming. So we were kind of bitter because it sucked us in, and we, like, had to watch it. Oh, they're so, they're so smart. But then we got going on it. There's two characters I really like. They're, like, um, this character, Vic. And then um, she's best friends with this guy, Travis. So they have a very cute relationship I always like. And then there is the one hot guy I really like. His name's Jack. He has the most amazing hair. <laughs> He's kind of DeLuca-ish. There was some other, there's some other cute guys on there too, but Jack's my favorite. They do find a lot of cute guys. Good casting. For casting people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't love it as much as Grey's Anatomy, but it's good. It's solid. Yeah, and it's definitely one of those ones I have watched a good chunk of it because of the crossover or 
they'll tie up a story or, you know. Well, it's the lead in. They'll do the, the lead in and then yeah. to Grey's Anatomy. Exactly. So that was also a spinoff, oh, you know, yeah. from a character that um, was on Grey's Anatomy and it spun off into Station 19. Yes. Right. Miranda's yes. husband yep, becomes exactly. a firefighter. Ben Warren. I like Ben. Yeah. He's nice. Yeah. He is nice. Do you know him, Virginia? <laughs> well, he's a, he seems like a nice guy. He does. Yeah. I like Ben, too. <laughs> okay. So and that- this whole time, ABC. This is all ABC. ABC. Exactly. Wow. And Hulu. That's where a lot of times I would catch up on my shows by getting on the treadmill on Hulu. Because if I missed it on the Thursday night, I could catch it on Hulu. Exactly. It was next day on Hulu. All right. So now we're at the Netflix deal, which reportedly is a hundred million dollar deal. Multi-year. Well deserved. I mean, friggin' absolutely. If you're going to pay a showrunner, excuse me, she is the one. She's amazing. Okay. So I think the deal was in 2017. And the first thing we get on Netflix from her is freaking Bridgerton. Oh, Wait, so the oh, deal God. was in 2017. And when did we get Bridgerton? Was 2020. That... But it takes a little while. Like, yeah, they, development. They do the deal. Then they got to like develop what shows they're going to do within Netflix. And then they got to make the show. And then they got to you know right. launch it. Mm-hmm. So we had to wait a little while to see how that was all going to play out. And then we get Bridgerton, which, God, hits it out of the park. So that wasn't created by her, but it was produced by her because it was based on some novels. Correct. But right. created in that she found these books yep. and mm-hmm. said, oh, I want to take these books. I want to do a total multicultural spin on them, you know, really have a the night, diversity. The diverse Everything cast, was amazing. Like the styling oh. of it. Just do it her own way. The costumes, the set design. I mean, the porn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The sex. I mean, no, it went from Grey's Anatomy makeout to like, oh, dear Lord. Uh, again, lockdown. I get Netflix for the first time. I've never had it. I get a TV in my room because everyone's home. So I'm like, oh, my God, I better lock the door because even if you pause it. Oh, oh yeah. I think one of the first episodes, it was the brother, um, I think, Anthony. And he's going at it outside against a tree with this girl. And I'm like, I mean, that's like, that's, that's pretty <laughs> graphic. I mean, full nudity going on graphic and i thought the bark burn i mean no just kidding Uh, (laughs) there was definitely like they were gonna just straight out of the gate let you know what you were getting because that was like in the first first i love the character of the queen Uh, i mean just such strong characters and uh the leads were reggae john page i mean talk about great casting of a beautiful beautiful man i mean besides just looking at him also, sorry to go back to the, like the graphicness. I mean, he really goes at it in the show too. Oh yeah, yeah. Very oh yeah. Graphic. <laughs> Both those characters you kind know, of put you le- in the mood after that show. Yeah, the lead characters. You know, Mark, my husband, benefited from a couple yes. of those <laughs> scenes together. <laughs> I think a lot of women. This was the common effect that it had for sure. And his aunt's character was incredible. The woman oh, she was aunt, fantastic. Yeah. She was. Oh, fantastic. but I love the family, and you know. The gossip columnist, and we're wondering who she is. I just saw um, the actress that plays Penelope, who, like, on the show is, like, red, curly hair, and the way she's just squished into this dress with her bosom, you know? Um, but I just <laughs> bosom. saw... The, oh, my God. It, it's it's a big bosom. But uh, I just saw the actual actress, and she was so cute. She had, like, blonde, straight hair, and I'm like, oh, she's adorable. <laughs> Do you 82 million households watch that? I mean, it was I mean, that a is mega a phenomenal hit. number. It's a mega hit. For sure. And it was eight episodes. And I think that's... Is there going to be a season two? It's yes. It's coming. But it yes. is coming in March. So our timing couldn't even be more perfect talking about Shonda Rhimes right now. It's going to be airing March 25th. Yeah. So Get ready, everybody. I mean, and then, you know, it's introducing new characters and... But sort of the same backdrop. Well, it's interesting because she talks about the fact that the book series is it's the eight siblings and each one mm, basically okay, right. got their own book. And so in her mind, she's like, well, this is eight oh. seasons. So, you know, that's the the conceit of the show is that each season is going to be a different love story as each one. The Bridgerton siblings, right? Yes. Each Bridgerton sibling is going to get their own. Wait, there's eight of them? <laughs> there's eight of us <laughs> all the time. And this one's going to be through one of the brothers, like he's in the main character right, push, it's right? Anthony, it's the oldest brother. Anthony, he's pretty cute. Oh, he's I'm on board. super cute. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be so exciting. So, I mean, some people were a little miffed when they realized, like, oh, wait, we don't get Regis on page again, you know? Simon. But, yeah. you know, you still get Bridgerton and they're gonna write the I crap have, out of it. It's yeah, gonna look I have a amazing. Feeling it'll be okay. Wait, so is Simon not even gonna be like a character in it? I don't think he's in this I don't one think at all. he's in it. 
Oh, I think he's look. No. He's off doing other amazing. He did awesome things. on Saturday Night Live. Oh, he uh, really I think did. it's you know what? I think we're going to be okay. I think they're going to. They <laughs> know what we want, Jenny. No, they, they're going to. So they're gonna, I, I think they're going to deliver. They're going to nail it. Lady, no Lady Whistledown will not disappoint us. There'll be lots of you know gossip and deliciousness and sexiness. I think. Yeah, they, they know what we want. Yes, it's around the corner. It was fun to watch. It was very uh, beautiful. Yeah, styling wise, it just looked amazing. The clothes, the sets, just it. Well, was what fantastic. out of the gate, man, to knock it out of the park with Netflix. Good job. Yeah, incredible. Okay, so what I'm watching right now from her is Inventing Anna, which is yes, I'm okay. That's very interesting because I read an article in Vanity Fair. It's based on a real life story, of sort of. A very elite grifter is the best way to put yeah. it. Yeah, there was a separate article that was in the New Yorker, and that's yes. actually what the reporter character in this iteration. Because other people have also bought different versions of the rights, so there may be other oh. things about this. Okay, this story, but inventing Anna, inventing Anna yes. on Netflix. Yeah, on Netflix, it's so good. It's a short run, so it's not going to be a, a series. It's just this like a mini series. Yeah, because oh, I like those. Yeah, I, you don't want to spoil it, but it can't really be a series because there really is sort of a you it's know a definitive end. yeah. ending of what so was going to happen. It is nine episodes, and um, it's Julia Garner who's in Ozark, mm-hmm. and she's fantastic. That accent man is really freaking weird. But if you watched some of when she appeared in court, the real life person Anna Sorkin, um, when she was in court, her voice and her demeanor. This actress, Julie Garner, is nailing it. Wait, I missed that. It's based on a true story? Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, based on a true story of basically this woman who conned a bunch of people in New York out of money. I mean... Oh, well, I don't love that. (laughs) Well, yeah. She basically said she was an heiress and uh, people bought into it. And Well, the access and the entree that she was given into some of these worlds was very hard to do and that she was able to pull it off is what most people found very fascinating. So, yeah, so it was a, the original article. It's more this is based off of what the interviewer from the from New Yorker, the magazine, New Yorker yeah. magazine experienced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is um, it's another one that I think is like on Netflix top 10 or what people are watching. Yeah, it's doing really well. Oh, the reporter character is played by Anna Klumsky who you might know from Veep, and she's oh, really wait good. wait a minute. What? Yeah, well, you also might know her from, she did the movie with Macaulay Culkin that put her on the map. My she, Girl? No. Yes. What was it called? <laughs> yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. My Girl. She's been around, oh, like, you know, she's a child uh, acting forever. Mm-hmm. She's really good in it. But then she does the classic Shonda elements of, like, Katie Lowell's and Jeffrey Perry. Like, all of sure. a sudden, you're starting to see familiar faces well, from Scandal and other shows. Well, Scandal and Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Meredith Grey's mother. She's she in it. She loves that actress. She's Kate Burton. She loves her. She has been in Grey's Anatomy. She was in Scandal as well. Yes, she was. I think mm-hmm. she's one of those ones, like, you're going to see her in almost everything she does. Laverne Cox, I thought, was great in this as well. It's nice to see Jeff Perry. I'm about three episodes in. Oh, Jeff Perry, going back to Scandal. What happened to him on Scandal? That was so good. Yeah. Okay, so Ginny, Scandal for you, for sure. Okay. Shonda talks about mentors, and that was with Chase, who she mm-hmm. did on um, The Princess Diaries with. That's why I thought it was so impressive. Ellen Pompeo, like, you're going to be an EP on this now. We're going to recognize you, and you're really going to be in it. Julia Garner is a producer on this as well. Nice. I, I love I that it's like that. sort of like, hey, not only like a woman thing, but like another opportunity, another skill set you're going to learn. Like, I just thought that was really cool that she was also a producer on The Inventing Anna. On Netflix. So this is the second production she's basically had come out on Netflix, and they've both been hugely successful. Yeah. And uh, what I think is also interesting, she talked about recently, that a lot of the shows that are upcoming are from people who were writers on her shows. Mm. She kind of like promotes from within. and Mentors. You know, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. She mentors. That's so. People. Yeah, that's, I mean, but that's how you get new voices, and that's how you raise people up. It's like, you know. They always say, like, you know, look to your right and to your left, and that's who you should be helping to rise up with you versus, like, you know, you're looking ahead of you. That's like a mentor dynamic versus, like, yeah. oh, you're right here with me? Come on. Let's all rise up together. All right. Well, currently watch on Netflix Inventing Anna and coming any minute now, season two of Bridgerton. There's so much you could uh, get on Shonda Rhimes, whether now it's basically all available on Netflix because Netflix acquired, they now have Grey's Anatomy on the Netflix platform. 
Nice. Oh, they do? Yes. Well, they have the old seasons, but the new stuff is still Hulu, right? I don't really know. But Netflix, you know, is kind of going to become Shondaland, I think. Yeah, I think they're trying to consolidate Shondaland onto Netflix. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Um, Brian, one year, my husband, for Christmas, because I love Grey's Anatomy. This was maybe five years ago. He bought me scrubs to w- wear while I wor- watch the show. I was ah. like, that's so sweet, but I'm not going to wear scrubs. <laughs> like the color of the show, like the blue ones. Oh, how cute. Where, Where are they? Why haven't you been that as a I costume gave for them Halloween? I niece, Catherine. Uh, who who actually a became a doctor? Like, yes. Did she, wait, do we know if she wore them? Um, I don't know. But I, it's so funny, too. Just a quick side note. Uh, when, when Morgan was little and I had to go to the ER with her one time, the doctor was really hot. And I was like, oh, this is so Grey's Anatomy. <gasps> I had a similar experience. Remember when I banged my head in the bathroom um, and cracked my skull up and had stitches? I was naked and mom had to put clothes on me. And so she's grabbed like it was winter. And so, you know, me had like three different types of plaids in there. So all these different plaids on. And the doctor came in. He was a plastic surgeon. It was so hot. I could not stop laughing because I look like a moron. But then I thought we could end up being married. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jenny. Sure. All right. I, I mean, I got to show my love. All those years of enjoying Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Had to show up. Yep. In my Grey's Anatomy t-shirt. Yeah, you, you know. even like practically wear a costume. I'm really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to wrap it up by saying that Shonda Rhimes, I'm a huge fan. She is freaking <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I would just say Shonda Land, which is like a roller coaster ride. Like I want a yearly pass. I want to get on, get on that <laughs> ride and I want to get off. And I really think, you know what? Lean to that year of yes. I think the TED Talk is something that everybody should go back and listen to or buy the book. It's probably still available. Oh, that TED Talk is definitely findable and a wonderful. It's only, I think, 30 minutes. You know, TED Talks are pretty short. And then the book itself is great. And I recommend the audiobook for sure just because she reads it and it's even better to hear it in her voice because she's amazing. Thanks for having me. And I will check out Scandal and I look forward to Bridgerton and whatever's left of Grey's Anatomy. I'll be there for it. And Inventing Anna, check that out too. Okay. All right. So that was a episode of Huge Fans, Shonda Rhimes. So please subscribe, like, we'd love to hear your comments. Make sure you follow us at Huge Fans Podcast. Thanks for listening, everybody.